Hey, voter, thank you so much for taking some time to talk about uh, characters with me, specifically ideation, conceptual characters with voter talk. That's, that's one of your new courses on schoolism.com. I want to talk specifically about reference because a lot of people, they use reference and things like that, but there's so many different ways to use them wrong. You know what I mean? Let's, let's be straight about this. So can we kind of elaborate on how do you think about reference? How do you use it? Yes, of course. Well, let's first talk about not using reference. Um, because when we don't use reference, because if, let's say you, you have to draw a car. You know what a car looks like, right? You could draw a car. Then uh, what happens in your mind is you kind of deduct the information that is an actual car. And what's left of that that's what a car will look like. And especially people who, who are, are not artists, if they draw a car, you know exactly what that car looks like, or a house, or a tree. They're symbols. They are reduced to very symbols, uh, to vignettes. You know, we know exactly what that tree looks like, that, the, that curly line with, with two uh, straight lines at the bottom. And that's a, an oversimplification maybe, but in fact, that's what happens if we don't use reference because uh, we reduce the world to something that is easy to to understand. And um, un uh, unless we are Kim Jong-ji, maybe, then we can draw everything <laughs> from our mind. But um, uh, And I think this is important also to use because that tree or that car is instantly recognizable because I, I'm only talking about it and probably you know exactly what tree I'm talking about. And uh, that's an important thing because that's something we can use. It, you can call it a cliche. That's something you can use as a designer because with that you can communicate really fast. You don't need all the information. If I draw that tree, you know exactly, oh, that's a tree. But it's boring. Then it's boring, but it's clear. And so uh, we we can use it at, uh, to communicate fast, but if we use it just that, it's boring and it's the same everyone uh, would use, then there's the reference part. So then we go out into the forest and we go look at, at actual trees. And then what we'll see is trees that have shapes and colors and, and sizes that we would never have come up with. And we could even draw a tree like that and you wouldn't even recognize it as a tree because it's the strangest shape. You, you have never seen anything like it. And so I think we can use reference to make our designs richer and, and fill it with the, you know, there's, so, there's endless information in nature. Uh, so if we combine those two, then we can com come up with designs that communicate, communicate, but at the same time, have enough information in it to be appealing. Uh, I, I like to compare it to, you know, storytelling. If, if I would uh, tell you the story of Lord of the Rings, I could tell it in one sentence, what it's about, what's happened, how it ends, but that's boring. You, you don't want that. You want the whole adventure with, with all the scenes where you think everything will go wrong and then they're happy again and then the, the bad guys come. And You want that whole adventure and you want to have the feeling that you are the one discovering how the story evolves. And I think it's the same with drawings. You, you don't want that tree where it's everything is clear from the very beginning. You know exactly what that is and what it looks like. You want the whole adventure and you want to explore that tree and see all the different details. And so you can think of it in the same way with a character. You know, if you have to, uh, if you have to draw a, a baker, you know, you can just draw this little guy with the, with the white hat and, and that's a baker. But it, you can also look f for references and, you know, what culture is he from? How old is he? What, what has he been through? Uh, what kind of baker is it? Is it modern? Is it, is it traditional? And all those elements and looking for references to see what that looks like in real life, that can help to make your design believable. Now, some people, they put the reference in front of them, they copy the reference straight, and then they get rid of everything, and then they just kind of, they just draw, 
right? Some people, they keep the reference there the whole entire time as they're creating their stuff. What do you do and why? Um, let me see. I combine, I think. I, I don't, uh, well, I never really copy the the reference that i that i see i might you know for example use uh, a, a part of it when i when i want to uh, show the effect of metal for instance i have a couple of images that show the the reflection that i need but that would be a specific part of it fantastic there you go that's conceptual characters with router Tulp on schoolism.com check it out if you want to learn more Thank <laughs> you.